What's happening, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Mutant Mondays. I got some good reception last week on the first episode, kind of delving into Blast from the Past with my old X-Men the Animated Series VHS tapes. And a lot of people, or a few people that commented, thank you all to all, thanks to all of you for engaging and uh, enjoying the content. And they enjoyed the idea of Mutant Mondays, so we're gonna do it again. We'll see if it keeps going weekly. I don't know, who knows what the future holds. But for this episode, the second episode, I wanted to delve into reasons why the X-Men stand out amongst other super teams within the comic book universe, comic book world. And there are actually several reasons why. That's probably why they've endured as they have outside of their kind of early rocky start in a bit. But then after they kind of evolved and they have going on have gone on to capture people's minds hearts imaginations i am one of those people obviously but there are many reasons why they do stand out amongst other super teams and kind of want to go into some of those here and i think to just kind of compare them like avengers justice league and even both of those teams have had different sub teams or different incarnations west coast avengers mighty avengers secret avengers savage avengers Justice League, International Justice League, Dark. I don't even know what Odyssey even really is, but uh, different Justice Leagues of America is like different rosters and different eras and Justice, Justice Society, Defenders, and tons of super teams out there. Important to note, I am excluding Fantastic Four from a comparison like this for a very specific reason, which I will get into in actually with this first point. So. The X-Men are, you kind of, if you look at some of the super teams within some of the ones that I mentioned, just their place and just their makeup and rosters and their relationships within the teams, the core teams, and not even just the core teams, but all the different teams and lineups throughout the years. They are, it's kind of funny to look at them because I would identify the X-Men as a family, the Avengers in, the Avengers primarily, and then Justice League kind of close to this but Avengers are more like co-workers and like co-workers and acquaintances and Justice League I would pretty much put them at co-worker status or just a bunch of people who just happen to find themselves together <laughs> sometimes because and I don't know if it's just the way that DC works with we look at a lot of their individual characters and they all they often come off kind of godlike which is kind of that's been a criticism that has been levied towards DC and some of their characters and obviously we always see it sometimes oh Batman can defeat anybody like that's God tier damn near but let's look at the way the X-Men kind of operate the way they cohabitate and the relationship the relationships that have endured throughout the decades and within the pages and then within like the minds and hearts of fans and just their relationships familial adversarial at times uh combative and romantic as well especially because you're gonna have a lot of that you're around people like these people some of these people who live together they've grown together it's bound to happen that's just that's just life just kind of looking at how again how they cohabitate just them their bonding and you can see it in a lot of uh from the x-men anime series and all the times in the comics they're always a lot of times it's not even just doing superhero stuff. They're playing basketball, they're playing baseball together, and like just the way that they bond is so, it, again, it separates themselves, separates them from other super teams. And why I mentioned I'm separating Fantastic Four from them because the Fantastic Four, the core four, and obviously they've gone through different times. They've had a couple other members kind of jump on, jump in and out, and so, just, just them, like as the core four, like they were always, like it, like just them four, like kind of bonded together. It's separate from everybody else because it's never been really, their roster has never really grown like that. So it's kind of been members kind of taking place and maybe they have somebody kind of tag along for a bit. I'm not the best Fantastic Four historian out there. So that's why, so those are just some of the reasons why I'm excluding them and not, because it wouldn't be, a, I don't, it's not a fair comparison. The way you can compare the X-Men to the Avengers and Justice League primarily, because those are going to be pretty much the core, I imagine those will be the core super teams within comics. And 
nothing against indie, obviously, because I love indie books, but none of them have the long-standing like titles and like they just don't have the histories to compare. Obviously, you have a lot of titles that have gone on for some time, but a lot of those are like solo characters. Spawn, Savage Dragon, and Hellboy has had a bunch of titles, but I wouldn't consider like the uh, what is it BRPD a like a super team. So like that's why I just kind of excluding any indie stuff as well. And Ninja Turtles don't count either. So <clears throat> just looking at again, the main point was just about how they how they operate together, how they function, and sometimes it's dysfunctional. And I remember one of my, another, one of many favorite quotes from the X-Men animated series, and it was the, uh, when Yuriko came back and they had the soul drinker, and somebody said something about them being, oh, I think it was Jubilee called them family, the X-Men called the X-Men family, and Gambit said, family, ha, this family, nothing but trouble. And that's just how it is. You're gonna have your, you're gonna have your ups and downs, that's that's life i mean that's life that's family that's relationships so that's why that's like that like them definitely being the primary if you look at super teams the x-men are obviously the gold standard for a, like a familial style uh like set of connections and group of groups of relationships so yes that's one reason there another is they stand up because of what they represent not just within comics but as a a social, like a social, a force of social equity, equality, and this is going to be the, the subject of like this next point is going to be the subject of a separate video. But the allegories of uh, Professor X, Professor Charles Xavier and Magneto compared to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Now, as a comic fan and as a black man, I'm black man first. I kind of grown up and you kind of saw that and you knew that because that's what people said but just understanding just as a black man like it's just I don't say it bothered me but I never really felt that connection to it because those were like those are real people and like I get like comics and media and art and fiction can obviously be a reflection of life and society but just the history of black folks in America and the world and just continually viewed by society. Like it just, it's just too, I don't wanna say too fictional, but it's just too entertainment wise for that to be a real, like to take that to heart kind of thing. But yes, you can obviously because the X-Men, like their members have just, <laughs> like the rosters and different lineups have just comprised been comprised of just so many demographics from like ages uh sex and gender race ethnicity religion <clears throat> they've covered the x-men run the gamut like no other super team has whereas avengers you can look at the avengers and a lot of times those rosters like pure white uh most of, and even looking at Justice League, they have more alien members than a lot of times than they do non-white members, especially non-white male members. So just their, just their makeup and now, again going back to their rough start, it was like they were all white. I'm like that's just what it was, and who knows why they got canceled? Like I don't know what the reason would have been for the sales dwindling to the point that they were ineffectually canceled which is kind of the subject for another Mutant Mondays, what would happen if the X-Men got officially canceled. So they were, I guess you could say, that's why I do air quotes, canceled because they were still running, it was just being reprinted. So so something was going on there and then it took giant size X-Men and that whole, like the new, uh, the new members, that whole new roster, diversifying it a little bit. And that kind of exploded into more and it just again it kind of exploded beyond that but that uh that social social makeup within is social makeup the good word for it but just the uh society i don't say societal makeup but just the structure and the demographical breakdown of they like just going back from the 70s to now like they've had it all and i think that's one of the reasons like a lot of people have connected to them because there's somebody that you can, like I can see, like as a brother, I see you got Bishop, Storm, 
and like full like full of people and even if you look at like Nightcrawler is obviously German but he doesn't look like the German part is honestly the German part doesn't even factor in that much because it's just if you don't say his name and just not talking about his origin like oh yeah he's German like you would never know he could legit be from any other universe timeline dimension and it wouldn't like his German ancestry wouldn't really be a big deal whereas Colossus Piotr if he's not in his metal form and like like his accent is I mean it's depicted as well as you can do on a page but in media action anime series and in the movies even though he's obviously underutilized but you hear that there I don't think they did it well in the third one though was it Maybe not even the second one either. It just sounded like sound like a normal American dude, normal American accent. So you didn't really feel the Russian side of it. But then, like going back to the giant size X Men and that uh, new roster there, it was still like Nightcrawler, even though he looks like that. Like even though he looks the way he does, he's still a German dude. Colossus, he's still a Russian dude. So maybe with some diversity with. Nightcrawler's religion because Nightcrawler, think of how many religious characters, like how many characters in comics where religion actually plays a substantial part of the character. It's not just something that's mentioned, but plays a substantial part. Nightcrawler, Daredevil, Miss Marvel, uh, there's, uh, is it Dust? I think, yeah, maybe it's Dust. And, but there are Muslim characters out there as well. So it's not just like a Christian, Christianity and Catholic kind of run thing. But that's all out there as well. We had Astonishing X-Men 51. Uh, Jean ba Jean Baptiste, I forgot North Star's full of the real name. I think that was it. But he got married to a human, uh, uh, like a human, to a human gay male. So we've had these uh, heterosexual relationships, homosexual. Now I'm gonna get into, as far as I know, I don't think it really asexuality has been really explored within comics but I mean sexuality as itself is fluid as all hell so like it's a I guess you could even call it a spectrum if you want to call it that but I guess kind of fluid and spectrum kind of they could I don't know I don't want to say they're mutually exclusive but they can kind of be there but anyways the X-Men like just the breakdown of like those demographics are like vast like they can check everything off the damn list so again that's just another strong reason why they have endured so well because people of different backgrounds from again from any sort of demographic you want to look at people can find somebody to look at something somebody to identify with an ideal a, a character trait a some kind of attribute physical attribute that you can connect with and identify with and potentially latch on to and that's why they can be so uh, that's why they have been such a force for people and for good within the, within the comic community, so demographics. And for the sake of keeping this video down, I will touch on one final third point. Again, there are many, but I just want to just kind of delve into a few. And this third point is connected, similar connected to the uh, last one about demographics, but if you look at the makeups of the super teams within comics, I think the X-Men... Well, if you look at just start at Marvel DC and how the women characters have been, I don't want to say utilized, but just how they have been handled. DC does a lot of it, does a lot with them individually. So a lot of them have their own, a lot more solo titles. Women have had a lot more solo titles at DC. And as a consequence, or as a result of that, a lot of them have uh, like larger rogues galleries because they've had time to Kind of build up these adversarial relationships with numerous characters whereas marvel they tend to focus on the team aspect is huge so a lot you see how characters within teams obviously and kind of leading to the x-men but you see how well they operate within teams and you've had like women take strong leadership roles within different teams avengers x-men all of them have been led by women at different times and as I said, four Sue is a strong force. Again, it's only four people for the most part, but Sue is a strong force of that four four person team, four person family there. So, and then X Men are, I would say, they are the trendsetters for that because 
don't know the trendsetters, but they are absolutely the leader of that because Storm, she's just like, of all their qualities, Queen and Leader have been uh, strong elements of that and people latch onto that. The strong black woman who is multi layered, a multi layered character with her own attributes and pro, like, I don't say pros and cons, but who has her strengths, has her faults, but is just a strong, well built character, on a, has a strong foundation, a fully developed character, and who has led the X Men and is a force in like figuratively and literally is because she can absolutely dominate uh dominate a fight if she needs to or if she has to so and rogue we've seen rogue and psylocke kitty jubilee people love jubilee as well and just kind of kitty and jubilee having been younger members at different points or having been the youngest members at different points and i think that's worked well for like a connecting point especially for either younger fans or just younger girls and we you know, kind of look at uh, coming of age kind of stories and I think them kind of had like you can look at Jubilee and Kitty amongst others but I feel like those two just because of their ages at, at early in their uh, kind of X-Men careers their mutant careers that's, that's such a weird phrase but uh, like younger fans, especially young girls, and just kind of finding their place within the world and within their community, their families, whatever. Like that, I feel like those were just kind of good anchors for a lot of people and just all of them, Jean Grey as well. And so I feel like they, the X-Men, and even just going back to, or looking back at the the X-Men from, I have the poster here, I don't know what year it came out, but it was the, oh, I hate to say his name, Brian Wood. But Olivier Coipel, that team with Storm, uh, Storm, Psylocke, Rogue, Jubilee, Rachel when she came back, which is, she's so dope as well. And who else was on there? What am I missing? Oh, Kitty. I don't know if I said Kitty. But yes, yeah, like that was, that is such a dope roster because those were a bunch, like the X-Women are just fantastic characters. And you can see a bunch here. Pixie, who I love, who doesn't get enough credit, doesn't get enough love. Emma Frost and Hope there as well. But X-Men are full of women, full of dope women, and them having been leaders of different rosters at different points in time is just a testament to how well uh, those women like have been developed as characters and as a, con as a result of that, how they have further kind of been entrenched within the fans uh, or the minds of fans men and women boys girls again all demographics but this time from the reader aspect the fans and the comic the comic fan community whereas before i was talking about the demographics of the x-men rosters this one now we're talking about why we're kind of connecting it to the demographics of the readers and having that there like and kind of deal with all the vitriol and just toxicity within the comic book community that I feel like the women in the X-Men haven't been the, I don't want to say the source because the source is just evil assholes, but I feel like that hasn't been like, oh, people are talking about woke and all this other nonsense. So I just feel like that is an enduring aspect as well. So the X-Men and how they uh, use and like have built up the women within uh, the different rosters over over the decades has definitely been a strong aspect and a, not an indicator, but another reason why the X-Men stand out amongst the other super teams within the comic book community. So those are, again, I didn't want to go into because there are a myriad of reasons. I just wanted to kind of delve into a few there and hopefully add a couple images over here just to give you a little just a little visual aids because we all love little visual aids there. But yes, uh, let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Why do you think some of the reasons are that the X-Men have stood out amongst other super teams and either why you think they do stand out? Maybe you, you might disagree. If you do, share your thoughts in the comments below. If you have just some other reasons, again, I don't want to go too far. I just wanted to break a couple down for the sake of time. But if you have some other reasons, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I may do a part two and kind of break down some more and just kind of go in there. Because again, this is just fun and celebration of all things X-related. So... Uh, yeah, share all your thoughts in the comments below. Happy reading, happy hunting, happy collecting. This is Gino Dragon. Thanks for watching and peace out.